All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Lorley Bittenhai, your professor in the Forensic Fingerprint Identification. So today, we will be talking about the reach counting. Uh, although in my previous discussions, we're already done with this. However, uh, as a form of reinforcement, I did to, again, uh, create this video for the purpose of guiding everybody about the proper way of reach counting. So our objectives in this activity or in this lesson is to be able to perform correct reach counting by first identifying the correct core, the correct delta, and the counting of the intervening ridges between the core and the delta. And at the end of the presentation, we will be having a short assessment or evaluation as to whether you learned uh, the topic or not. Okay, so let's now proceed to the second slide, which is all about the reach counting. So the reach counting is conducted by drawing a line between the delta and the core. So the delta and the core. As long as you touch or cross the ridge, so it is uh, conducted by drawing a straight line between the core. This is the core. And this one is the delta. So after you establish the core and the delta, the next thing that you have to do is to draw a straight line and then count the intervening reach between the core and the delta. So we have here the different rules. Number one, one ridge count must be a looping ridge. So in this case, okay, so this is a looping ridge or a recurring ridge. And uh, since we already established the core and the delta, then the next thing to do is to count the intervening ridge between the core and delta. Remember, rule number two, it says that the delta and the core are not counted. So in this case, the core here and the delta will not be counted. So what we are going to count is the ridge that is intervening between the core and the delta. So in this case, we have one count. So in the second example, uh, this is an ending rod, so which is the core, and the delta is this one, that. So again, we have to perform the ridge counting by establishing the core and the delta. This one is the delta. So after that, you have to look into the ridge intervening between the core and delta. So in this case, we have one count. So because we only have one intervening ridge between the core and the delta. So in this example, we have also here an ending rod or an ending ridge. That is, okay, don't forget to review the rules in selecting the core. So we have different rules in selecting the core. Uh, just to reiterate that the core is placed upon the innermost sufficient recurve. So here, our sufficient recurve is this one, and the innermost ridge within that sufficient recurve is an ending ridge. Okay, so therefore, this is our core. Okay, and our delta here is this one, bifurcation. So let's now count the intervening ridges, one, two, three, and four. So all ridges that was touched or passed by the imaginary line or a straight line that was drawn from core to delta shall be counted. And in this case, we have four counts. So at this uh, example, we also have here the, okay, the core, this one, and here is the delta. Delta here is a short ridge. Okay, so one, two, we have two counts no, of bridges. So that's how simple we are going to do the, okay, the, the reach counting. So next is fragments and dots are counted as ridges only if they appear to be as thick as the ridges. 
Okay? So if you cross at a bifurcation, count each of its arms. So let's uh, try to um, find out this one. So before we proceed, I will erase first, clear the uh, drawings that I had. Now let's have this. First is we have to establish our delta and then our core. So and then count the intervening ridge. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have here 10 counts. So same goes to this. Now, in case of a bifurcation, it says here that if you cross a bifurcation, you have to count each of its arms or meaning each of its uh, reach. So in this case, so how many count do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, ten. So we have to do ten count, uh, two counts here. Why? Because this is a bifurcation. And as you can see, uh, it passes the thick area or the point of splitting of the bifurcation. However, if uh, the imaginary line pass on at this part, no? Okay, so which is farther from this bifurcation or the splitting of this ridge, this will only this will only be counted as one. Pero pag dumaan siya dito sa part na to, na napansin mo, thick na no, yung ano um fingerprints or yung ridge. Okay, so that that will be counted. Okay, two counts will be given. So that's how simple ridge counting is conducted. Okay. So let us now proceed to the next uh, rule. If the delta is on the loop only, okay? If the delta is on the loop, there is no ridge count. Now in this example, okay, so uh, what happened here? So here is the core and this one is the delta, okay? Because uh, the delta here is this. Since uh, the, one of the rules says that uh, in case, okay, here is the delta. So in this case that there's no other first obstruction, uh, no other obstruction, sorry. Okay, so the first obstruction is this recurving ridge and we have to select this as the delta and this one is the core. In this case, there will be no ridge count since no intervening ridge that was found in this area. Okay, so what will happen? This will not be categorized as a loop. Okay, so this will become a tented arch. Okay, pag walang ridge count, okay, so tented yan. Kasi it does not comply with the requirement, no? the three requirements for a certain pattern to be considered as a loop. Okay, so same goes to this pattern. There's no ridge count. Okay, the core is here and this one is the delta, no ridge count. So here, okay, the core is this. Okay, do we have a reach count? So we have a reach count here. Okay, so because there's an intervening reach. Now, number six, white space must intervene between the reach, uh, between the delta and the first reach count. Okay, so there must be a white space. What do we mean by white space? The white space is this one. Okay, this one, that's the white space between the, the delta. This is the white space from the delta, and this one is the white space, okay, starting off from the core. So, and the ridge count shall be starting with the first ridge, okay, of course, after the core, okay, at, at saka yung kanyang white space. So, we have two counts here, so we have two counts here. Okay, and we have three counts in this particular part. So next. So what is the, what was stated here? If the delta is above the shoulders, like this one, above the shoulders. So this is the shoulder of the loop. If it is above the shoulders of a single looping ridge, this is a single looping ridge. And the core is on the shoulder. 
Okay, here is the four. There is no ridge count unless the imaginary line cuts the recurve. So in this case, there's no ridge count because there's no intervening pH between the core and the delta. Unless it's like this, though it is uh, within the level of the, the delta is within the level of the sufficient recurve or the shoulders of the looping ridge. So it is still having a ridge count kasi meron pa rin tayong isang ridge dito. So uh, this is the innermost sufficient recurve. But then there is a delta here and there's a white space. There is the core here. There is a white space here. So we have here one count. So that's the rule number seven. And if the looping ridge is above the delta, like this one. So the looping ridge is above the delta. So here is the delta. This is the looping ridge. The delta, uh, the core is placed in the center of the recurve, provided that the shoulders are of equal distance from the delta. So this will be the delta and this is the core. So do we have ridge count here? No ridge count kasi wala naman siyang intervening ridge. So same with this, there's no intervening ridge. Okay, letter B. If the rod or spike is as high as the shoulders, the core is placed on the end of the rod. Okay, so whenever the ending ridge or the rod reach or, or it is higher as the shoulder of the loop, this one. So the core will be placed on the end of that rod. Okay, so in this case, okay, our core is this one. So this is our delta. So we have one intervening ridge between the core and the delta. So there is a ridge count. So same with this example, we have here the core. Okay, in this case, it doesn't reach higher or higher as the shoulder of the loop. Okay, so uh, the core is here. This is an ending ridge. Ending ridge. And this is a bifurcation, which is considered as the delta. So we have one ridge count here. Number eight, natural and unnatural breaks in ridges. The distinction is up to the judgment of the individual classifier. So, ano tong mga natural and unnatural breaks? So, natural and unnatural breaks, it's like this. Yung napuputol yung, okay, ridge. Now, what will happen in, in the counting of this ridge? So, what you have to do is, just count the ridges that was touched by that straight line drawn from the delta to the core. So in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 9 counts. So that's how simple the rule is. Whenever it touches the ridge, then you have to count it. Now, uh, in counting a bifurcation, we have to follow these rules. So there will be one count whenever, okay, the imaginary straight line, okay, touches only the, okay, single ridge, no? Like this. So we have one count here, one count. However, in this case, there will be count, two counts of this bifurcation kasi nag-split na dito sa part na to. And this is already considered as two counts. So then, two counts on it. Unless magkaroon ng another splitting dito, so like meron isang ridge dito na tumubo or nag bifurcates then th there will be a three counts no so that's just an example so two counts for this uh, example one two okay so and so in this example again we have to consider so this is an islet okay there is a bifurcation that uh, converge at a certain point forming an eye Okay, so, or in closure, there will be two counts, again, on the portion where the ridges, okay, split like this, split at this point and merge at this point. So, pero two counts pa rin siya kasi hindi pa niya nalalagpasan yung part na kung saan magmimaintain niya siya sa single ridge. So, now let's have the, okay, assessment. 
Okay, so based on that evaluation or based on that ano, examples and rules in the conduct of reach counting, please find out the reach count of the given pattern. So you can print the material by accessing it at the file uh, using this link. So please take a look on the link and copy, then uh, access the material. So, or you can just uh, screenshot this one. So for your activity. So first is, you have to, this is a loop, no? So find out here at this part, the delta, and of course, look for the inner most sufficient recurve as the whole, and then perform the reach counting. Same goes to this level, to this pattern. Okay, locate the whole and the delta. So again, this is another loop. There is the possible delta, and happen. Yun na lang dyan sa part na yan. So, hanapin nyo dito yung part kung saan may delta at may core. So, dito and dito yung core. Hanapin nyo dyan. So, that will be your assignment. Uh, that will be your activity for today. Okay. So, that's all. Thank you and God bless everyone. So, that ends my presentation. So, I hope that you will be properly guided as to... Uh, proper way of counting the ridge okay intervening between the delta and the core so thank you very much goodbye